So this is one of the bagworms that we're going to be picking off today. But we're going to first look around the other side of the tree and we're going to take a look at the junipers, size them up to see if there's more of them. The good news is I've looked at this tree and look how tiny they can get. If you've never had a bagworm problem, it only takes losing one tree to get you more aware of it. That's why you come out in the winter time and start looking for your uh, what's happening. Two weeks ago, I came out just to check the garden. I found um, that the fencing was down. I had to do some deer spray. And when I came around the other side of the fence is where I saw the one bagworm. If you have one, there's more than one. So let's take a check it. They like, their favorites are arborvitas. Bagworms love arbor, arborvitas. They love junipers, which when you look at these, and I came over here and looked, uh, they look very healthy. I do not see any bagworms on these two trees. I've looked around them. Um, the one thing about a bagworm is you want to take care of it in the fall of the year. Winter is the best time. Um, and the way you take care of them, and you can see how pretty those trees look. Uh, there aren't any signs of those bagworms or disease on them. The way I've learned to take care of them is to pick them off. And so that's what we're going to do today because we've looked over here at um, the other side of this big arborvita. And the great news, there weren't any bagworms on this side. There's some winter, um, there's some foliage that falls off every season. But as for bagworms, I've looked this over. This side doesn't have it at all. Seems to be on that one side where I found the first one a couple weeks ago when I came outside. I wouldn't have found that had I not gotten ready to spray with my liquid fence and fix some netting. Um, now, you do not, this bagworm that's in my hand, you don't throw it on the ground because in May, in this little tiny bagworm, three to a thousand little eggs can be in there. Now you can squish them, which I won't do. Uh, I'm going to put mine in a plastic bag, seal it up, the ones I pick off, and I'll put them in the garbage. But you don't throw it on your ground because it'll just open up and then they will find their way to the arborvitas, your um, junipers. But we're going to come around this way. And I've got a ladder set up on the other side. I, I don't know why I chose to come this way, but oh, I know why. Let me take a second here. I'm going to keep this bagworm right here. I watched Laura this week. Everyone probably did. And I winter sowed some larkspur. And I she went ahead and took some of her winter seeds. The larkspur like this kind of weather. That's why I'm winter sowing them. And she just casted her seeds where into the area she wanted them to grow on top of snow and here it is february 1st we've had some really gorgeous snows we're supposed to get a snow on friday so i'm going to take my larkspur and instead of winter sowing in a bucket which i've already done i am going to sow some on the river's bank too i'm going to let the seeds just soak into the soil and hopefully we'll have plants grow up there too. So that's a fun thing. Watch Garden Answer, Laura. Uh, if you're not familiar, oh my goodness, I'll put her channel in my description. But she was putting out poppies. I don't have poppies to sow, but I thought I'd just go ahead and throw those out here since it's a 50 degree day. And you're on Garden on the West Fork, Zone 6, West and West Virginia. We've had snow, sub-zero weathers uh, at night, and freezing um, temperatures through the day. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start picking off my bagworms, putting them in this bag, which is a Ziploc bag, seal it, and I will <clears throat> dispose of it in the garbage. So I'm going to, what I have found, the only spot that I saw the bagworms was where I saw the first one, which is on this backside of the arborvita between my neighbor Mary's house. And so what you do, they look like little pine cones. And 
That's why if you're a new, I was a new gardener, how many years ago, Reg, when oh, we planted these? Man. You know, 20 some years ago. I was 30. And I had never planted Arborvita. And I had five of these trees. They've all succumbed to wind, split, beaver. Beaver, beaver took the one on the corner. Yeah. And then one turned completely brown. And here it was bagworm damage. My, that's how I learned to keep an eye. So I'm going to go ahead, climb up on this. You can see these tiny ones. They look like just leaves. They eat off of the, they will strip your tree. Look at that one. If you're not aware, that's just a leaf. Here we go. And in this little bag, the moth will come out. Isn't that gross? Interesting, but lots and lots and lots of eggs that I don't want. The wind distributes these. Here's a baby one. I'm going to take my gloves off. But if you don't get out here and take a look at these things, you'll never know they're there. But I think I've caught this in time. I'm so thrilled that I saw the first one. Here we go. And I, the other, the other great thing for control, because I'm picking them off, but their natural predator are like your sparrows, your chickadees, your uh, titmuses. Um, if there were these on a deciduous tree, you have woodpeckers that eat them. So Reggie and I, it's not uncommon to see a row of sparrows hanging up on Mary's gutter. And this tree becomes home to so many birds, but they will eat the larva through the winter. So um, I would rather use this method of control. It's just checking your trees. You can also go and use uh, BT, uh, spinosad, but I would recommend if you have a, uh, a real problem, get in touch with your um, extension service. That's just a gall. Not worried about that. But as I climbed up here, they didn't seem to go up any higher, so it's really contained, which makes me very happy. I don't want to lose this tree. It's a focal point for me. But I, there were a couple more. Yep, here's one, great big one. So this is how I take care of it and manage. This one, hang in there. Anyway. This is my way of taking care of the bagworms. So these little worms will get tucked in to this bag. I won't squish them. You can also put them in water with some um, soapy water, but then you still have to, after you drown them and eggs, you still have to dispose of them, not in your compost pile and don't throw them on the ground. So there's our problem with the bagworm. I think I've got it all under control. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take another peek through here, but I was real glad to see it was just all in that one section where we saw the first one two weeks ago. And, you know, I never did pick it up, so it's still under the snow somewhere, but I'll look for it. So anyhow, thanks for watching. Gardening on the West Fork, taking care of the bagworm the best you can. We'll see you the next time. Bye.